of years ago, mega monsters terrorized the seas. So enormous, so terrifying, so deadly. Even the great dinosaurs were no match for these super beasts from the deep. Now, the Discovery Channel and zoologist Nigel Marvin are blasting off on the fantasy expedition of all time, to the beginning of time, long before the Earth was fit for human habitation. Explore the ancient world and come face to face with creatures too horrible to imagine on a countdown to the seven deadliest seas and meanest monsters of all time. The expedition's first stop, the Ordo Vision Era. It will be a perilous trek along the ancient timeline, all the way back to the dawn of life on Earth, long before the Ice Age before the first humans, even before the dinosaurs. The Ordo Vision is a mind-boggling 450 million years ago. So far back, plants have yet to cover the land. It's a world ruled by creepy crawly and crusty creatures, where mankind wouldn't stand a chance. Welcome to New York City, or what will one day become New York City. Only in the Ordovician, it sits on the equator, a harsh, inhospitable wasteland. With so little oxygen, humans would need a special air mix to survive. Just look around, and you can see why the atmosphere is so different. There's no life at all on the land. There's no insects in the air. There's not even worms in the ground. And most crucially of all, there's no plants. There's not a speck of green. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's not being absorbed by them, and they're not boosting the atmosphere with oxygen. But it's a different story out there in the sea. There's been life there for hundreds of millions of years. And you can take it from me, evolution has produced some real monsters. It's time to go fishing for sea monsters. In the Ordovician, bait is never a problem. With no land animals to gobble up the critters the sea spits out, the beaches are littered with all kinds of rotting organisms. An armor-plated fish. The first future New York City resident to appear is a sea scorpion. It's probably not directly related to the nasty little suckers we know today, but in the Ordovician, they grew to six feet long. There's no venom in its tail, and yet given half a chance, those menacing pincers up front could do some real damage. Oh. As I found out, those sea scorpions are pretty fearsome. But there's much bigger sea monsters out there. The sea scorpions, they're not the top predators. But to see the real big ones, I need a little more than a fish on a stick. I'm going to try with this. It looks a bit like a giant woodlouse, but of course, it's a trilobite. There's no relatives of this alive in the 21st century. There's up to 15,000 species. They range in size from a really tiny one, a millimetre in length, to this big one. This is about as big as they get. 
and I need one like this because I'm going to use this like a fisherman with a fly and I'm going to try to attract a much bigger catch. And all I need to do is to insert this camera into the carcass and if you're squeamish, look away now because what I've got to do is pop out the eye of this trilobite. But you need light to take pictures. And this first day back in time was ending much too early. Or was it? 450 million years ago, the Earth was spinning faster than it does now. So the day was only 21 hours long. The Earth is still slowing down today. A few hundred million years from now, we could be looking at a 28 or even 30 hour day. This was the day that I was hoping to get my first dive with a sea monster. In my tank, I had a special air mix. If I tried to breathe the Ordovician air at pressure under the water, I would have become unconscious because of the high carbon dioxide content. I also had something that was a bit before its time, a shark-proof suit. Now, sharks haven't evolved yet, but I hope this would give me some protection from the vicious sea scorpions. The chemistry of the water would have been very similar to our oceans today. The temperature, a balmy 75 degrees. I knew the bigger predators would be out in deeper water, so I ventured out into the middle of the bay. This look very appetizing, but for the predators around here, this should be a tasty snack, and I'm hoping but that camera is going to catch the moment when a monstrous predator tries to snaffle this up. like trilobites. Come on, let go! <clears throat> the Ordovician Sea would have been similar to our tropics, with coral reefs and many of the same sponges and seaweed we would recognize. But the fish couldn't be more different. Smaller, no teeth, and mostly living on the sea floor, sucking up mud. It was late afternoon before the fish started to bite. There's something, something interesting there, and it is much bigger than a sea scorpion. <laughs> I've taken the camera. That's the end of the trilobite cam. I have got to see what that is. happened here but if I follow the line I should be able to find the predator the camera's not at the end which probably means that the predator isn't far away this is intriguing I don't know what's going on I don't know why they're all gathering, but first there was one sea scorpion, then there was another, then another, then another. And now they are all around me. There's a whole carpet of them moving along the sea floor. They're whizzing past my head. They're all heading in one direction. And there it is. It's an author cone.
On his voyage back in time, Nigel Marvin has come face to face with the most threatening beast the world has ever seen. The time is 450 million years ago, and these behemoths grow up to 40 feet long from the tentacles to the top of its shell. He sensed me here. Go, yeah, my heart hammering. I don't want to be grabbed by those tentacles, but those simple eyes, they should shun the light. So all I can do is start flashing my light, and maybe that will discourage him. The Orthicone's simple eyes may have been frightening, but they weren't much when it came to sophisticated optics. There was no lens whatsoever, just a hole that let in light, much like a child's pinhole camera. And now he's gone, I can't see where he is. There's still the sea scorpions there. There! There's the orphan coat. And it spotted one of the sea scorpions. They're dragged back to the mouth. There's a horny beak. Oh, you can hear it. I can actually hear it under the water. Hear the crunching sounds as the sea scorpions are crushed by the beak. It's likely that orthocones spend most of their lives in deep water, where little light penetrates, so they've never had good eyesight. Instead, they rely on another sense. They actually smell out their prey and then, simply, crush it to bits. The orthocone, that really is the top predator of Ordovician times. They had no competition and would have fed on pretty much anything they came across, from sea scorpions and trilobites to smaller orthocones and whatever fish might swim by. And I am hitching a ride on the back of an orthocone. The deeper Nigel rode, the gloomier and more menacing his free ride became. Eventually, he decided the orthocone had reached his stop. It was definitely time to get off. Thanks, orthocone. Thanks for the ride. God. This is where the sea scorpions were heading, to join a mass spawning on the beach, much like their distant cousins of today, the horseshoe crab. It's a full moon and one of the highest tides of the year. Their eggs are protected in the sand until the next high tide washes the young larvae back out to sea. Ordovician period was no picnic. The air had little oxygen, nothing grew on the land, and the sea was filled with predators. Not exactly a garden of Eden, 